Uh, one of the, the flies that I, I consistently failed to um, develop appropriately uh, is, is a glass eel or an elder, which is uh, a, a, a very translucent imitation of a, of a baby eel. Uh, fairly fresh back from the Sargasso Sea, where they they all are are, are produced, uh, at least American eels. Um, in an attempt to uh, improve on uh, the uh, the production of, of of something that really looks like a like a little baby eel, um, I, I sought help with the computer, and the first. Thing I came across as a glass eel or an elver imitation um, was something that was done by Barry Ord Clark. Uh, he's an Englishman and uh, very clever. Uh, I made a few deviations from from material that he used, not very many, and uh, I'll point them out as I go along. Uh, but uh, this is a very Clever fly, very easy to tie, a little bit specialized in materials. In other words, you might have to actually go out and buy something, uh, but not very much. And uh, you can really do a bang-up job imitating a glass eel. And I think this probably could be a very effective pattern for flats fishing in a number of places around the world. One of the early imitations, uh, going back to really Elizabethan times, um, of, of a baby eel was this um, more classically designed thing called a, uh, a blue elver. And uh, I didn't use all of the uh, perfect materials for it. I substituted a little bit here and there. But uh, this gives you some idea of what was used to attempt to imitate the little baby eels. Uh, this was a sea trout fly originally, uh, just like Barry Ord Clark's imitation was designed for sea trout fishing uh, in, in the UK, but uh, certainly very effective. Now, to tie a really good-looking imitation of, of a glass eel or elver. Um, the tying sequence is pretty simple. You take some thread. Uh, Barry, Barry used a, uh, a white Dyneema, which uh, is saltwater resistant and, and really disappears uh, when, when uh, you put head cement on it, uh, I'm using a fine monofilament, which absolutely vanishes. And I'm using uh, a little squid imitation designed for saltwater applications. And I'm going to take, as he did, one of the, the, the tentacles off of this squid and I'm going to just cut it free of the lure. You can buy these little little squids in tackle shops, uh, probably almost anywhere. Um, and uh, you certainly can find them on the internet if you don't have a tackle shop handy. You decide how long you want this to be by placing it next to the hook and looking at the tail end to see how far it's hanging back. And it looks like we can use probably pretty much the full length. This is a number four Eagle Claw uh, Billy Pate hook. And I'm going to gently, at first at least, tie this little bit of rubbery stuff right onto the hook. If you use a lot of pressure here, it makes this roll right over and lay flat on top of the hook shank. So you use gentle pressure initially, get it secure, and then come up to the front. And just wrap it down snugly. 
That is the entire tying portion of the fly. Except that one has to at least make a half hitch to keep the thread from unraveling. So we'll do that. For the next step, um, Barry used Bug Bond, which is a, uh, a UV product that is uh, um, made in England, which makes it sensible for him since he lives there. And he puts a little bit right over the area where it's tied down. And while rotating the vise, which means you probably want a rotary vise to do this effectively, to keep things nice and neat, he applies a little bit of blue light or UV to secure everything in place. nipping here at the end just to smooth out the head shape get rid of that little tiny bit of thread that I had there and I'm going to do it again exactly the same way and building up the size so I'm putting a bigger drop on there and very quickly getting right back to rotating this thing around solidifying things a bit. We'll give it just a little bit more. Real tough tying, huh? Any residue at all makes it very difficult to put eyes on this kind of material. So just to be safe and sure, I take a little rubbing alcohol and wipe the surface off. Then give it a little bit of time to dry, which happens very quickly with alcohol. before I get fancy and take little stick-on decal eyes, flat, and using my dumping needle, one at a time, place these neatly on each side. Uh, again, Barry used um, eyes that have a white outer ring in his video and you can find that video on YouTube and I suggest you watch it because the more of this that you see the better it looks as a potential striper catcher. Now of course 
we need to add more stuff to keep those eyes there. So here we are with the stuff again. Adding more material to cover these decal eyes will keep them in place. You don't need the heavier coats that I put on previously, just enough to coat the eyes and cover them up. And again, cook them. And finally, as I always do, a thin coat of head cement. Which brings back the shine that you wiped away when you use that alcohol. And you give that a little bit of time to set up. The, the fly is essentially done except for one detail. It has virtually no color, a little bit of sparkle and some eyes. It does have some shape. It certainly could be very enticing to fish and we want to give them a chance to at least see a little bit of it. So we'll take a, my favorite seems to be olive, we'll take an olive marker and just go right down the top and the top of the head. That's it for color. Now, the basic glass eel is done. But if you want this to look meatier, then it can be done Quite simply again, very same basic approach, we'll take another number four hook. Get it in the ice. Again, the very difficult tying sequence. Making the head just maybe a. And this time, um, since I've already done this in black once, and I can show that to you, I'm going to do it in sort of a reddish color this time. You could also use multicolored, uh, two tone squid tentacles. But what you do here is you tie one on each side of the hook shank. And since I cut them off exactly at the same time, they're going to be exactly the same length. Thoughtful of them. And of course, yeah. make sure that's nice and secure.
title. Given its initial code of UV material. This gives it a more dense look, more material, a little more visible. Even if it's made with clear material, it still looks a little more substantial. And there's one little bit of material that I trapped over here, and now that I've done what was necessary to secure everything, I can just nip that off with no problem at all. And, as before, return to coating things with substantial amounts of stuff. So certainly, it takes a lot longer to put the, U, the clear UV material on the hook shank than it takes to do any tying. And this certainly becomes then an attractor pattern. Again, a little wash job. Light coating, UV.
little bit of head spin. You can just leave the top of the head clear. Uh, you already have color here, so the density is pretty much assured. Uh, it provides a really nice result. Here's the glass deal we just tied. Another tied on a number one hook, which appears a bit large. The original size that you'll see in Barry Ord Clark's presentation of this is very much his fly pattern. And one tied in black. A little bit of everything for the well-prepared fisherman.